Welcome back to Indianomics. We've been speaking with Professor Ishwar Prasad, an acclaimed China expert, Manoj Pradhan, global economist at Morgan Stanley. Well, Professor Prasad, now to the real economy, which uh, you study so closely. How slow is the Chinese economic growth? The, the world fears, as George Soros put it, that probably it is slowing much more than the world is estimating. What's your own uh, uh, guess? I think there is uh, um, considerable concern about um, the uh, actual state of Chinese economy given the opacity in uh, a lot of Chinese data. And certainly one shouldn't take too seriously the quarter to quarter uh, movements in the GDP growth rate which looks suspiciously smooth. But over uh, longer periods of a year or a few years, um, I don't think the GDP growth data are a significant misrepresentation of what is happening in the economy. And given the opacity in Chinese data, uh, market analysts and investors tend to focus a lot on high frequency indicators that are available on a month by month basis. These are seen as much more reliable than um, GDP data. Mm. So these include things like um, uh, bank lending, freight volumes, electricity consumption, all of which are seen as somewhat more reliable. But the problem is that all of these indicators, which certainly haven't been doing uh, very well recently, are largely about the manufacturing sector of the economy. And this is something that the Chinese government itself has acknowledged, that the manufacturing sector certainly has hit a very rough patch in the economy. But it's important to remember that the manufacturing sector is not as big um, uh, a component of GDP as it used to be a decade ago or even five uh, years ago. The services sector has become much more important. Um, so available data, which unfortunately are not available on a month-by-month -month basis, they're available only at a lower frequency, say quarterly. Um, those data about the services sector, about what is happening in the labor market, what is happening to household incomes and consumption, all suggest an economy that is by no means uh, uh, stalled, as the manufacturing sector data would suggest. Um, and it's quite plausible, in my view, that the economy could be growing somewhere in the 6 to 7 percent range. It's hard to be much more um, precise than that. And there are, I think, legitimate questions out there about whether the services sector is growing fast enough to account for the apparent weakness in the manufacturing sector. But whatever the growth rate, I think it's also very important to keep in mind that if the economy were in fact stalling very sharply, the Chinese government does have a significant amount of room with both monetary and fiscal policy to be able to boost growth in the short run. I think they're holding some of their powder dry in the short run largely because um, they don't see the landscape quite as foreign investors seem to be seeing it. And in addition, they want to move forward with a somewhat more balanced mix of policies rather than just relying on monetary policy, which would mean a credit financed investment boom that would not be good for the economy in the long run. And they're thinking of trying to use fiscal policy somewhat more aggressively to put money directly in the hands of corporations and consumers so they go out and consume more and perhaps have the private sector invest more. Uh, but that hasn't happened yet mm. and I hope there will be more action on that. So I'm less concerned about um, uh, short-term growth than about how they accomplish it. Uh, well, Manoj, uh, what's your take? Uh, what's the next scenario that one might expect out of China? Much more instability in their markets, uh, a much more slowing economy? Or do you think that uh, the worst has been seen and things will smooth out now? What has happened in China over the last 12 months is that the manufacturing sector has really slowed down significantly. Um, and over the summer, there was a concern that it could get even worse. But at that point, what we've seen is somewhat of a stabilization. Our proprietary index that our China economics team puts out, MS Checks, suggests that we've had some very, very, very modest stabilization. And as China has stabilized, um, the economic story, at least, if not the market story, has allowed some semblance of normalcy to return to the data and to sales. Um, now at this point in time, what we believe should happen is that the consumption story should start slowing down. This is typically what we've seen in Japan, what we've seen in Korea, but also from an economic point of view, if you're not creating capital formation at a very rapid pace, then sustaining wage growth, sustaining income growth, and therefore sustaining consumption becomes harder. So consumption will slow down, but keep in mind that with investment growth falling further and remaining very low, for every year that consumption growth is higher than investment growth, you will see consumption as a share of GDP pick up. Uh, 
Um, and so there'll be something for the bulls, something for the bears. The bulls will say, look, China is becoming consumption oriented um, because the share of consumption is rising. And the bears will say, look, China's consumption itself is slowing down, which is not what was anticipated. Most people have anticipated a pickup in consumption growth, which I think will be very, very, very hard for them to generate. Uh, well, uh, Professor Prasad, actually, I want to zoom out to the world economy just to end this conversation. Uh, would you say that in 2016, the global economy, given what you know about the China, uh, Chinese economy and the U.S. Uh, and other parts of the world, that the global economy will grow more slowly in 2016, at least in the first half, than it did in 2015? Now, China is certainly not going to be a huge uh, contributor to um, an increase in world growth. If anything, we're going to see a slight um, uh, moderation in growth. But a Chinese economy that is now the second largest in the world and amounts to about $11.5 trillion um, compared to the U.S. economy, which is about $17 trillion, mm. is still a very big economy. And if it grows at 6%, that adds even more to global GDP than the U.S. economy growing at somewhere in the range of 25 to 3%. So I don't want to minimize what is happening in China, but certainly if we see continued depreciation of the uh, Chinese yuan um, driven by market forces, um, uh, as could well be the case, mm. and if we see um, there is very little uh, domestic demand pickup in the Eurozone and Japan, mm. that does portend for a difficult year ahead. And the other big concern is that deflationary pressures could intensify around the world. In China, CPI inflation is quite low, uh, around 1.5%, and purchasing uh, the uh, deflation in the um, uh, PPI mm. is now entrenched. It's now at about 6%, and it's been negative for a very long period. Uh, Japan and the Eurozone are still teetering on the edge of deflation, uh, and this could all mean that the world looks to the U.S. Uh, mm. to pull it along, which could mean a stronger dollar, which might end up hurting the U.S. economic recovery, although that doesn't seem to have happened uh, as yet. So I think we still face a lot of fragility in the world economy in 2016. Okay, Manoj, let me uh, come to your view of uh, the global economy. Would you say that uh, 2016, the global economic growth is going to be slower than uh, what it was in 2015? Well, it's certainly, it's certainly starting off uh, in, in, in a uh, more uh, worrisome fashion. Um, we had a very difficult time for China if you keep, uh, if you uh, go back to 2015. Uh, China had a very, very, very difficult growth period. We don't think that the growth data this year in the recent past has been as worrisome. Um, in fact, most of the numbers uh, from, from sales and property markets and everything still look reasonably stable. But the issue has been about investor expectations and the issue has been about currency expectations and that has moved on moved on uh, uh, in a more dramatic fashion um, in the early part of the year there's no doubt about that the risk is clearly that where oil has gone um, uh, suggests that the, the economy could be showing more signs of weakness than strength uh, I don't think I think it's probably too early to to make that as a uh, stable call for this year um, it, it still looks like something that will kind of push through uh, a very slog uh, oriented uh, growth strategy, but I don't think uh, it, this is something that and many are discounting at this point in time. It is a worry that most people are taking on board. Uh, Professor Prasad, final question to you. Uh, would you say, therefore, that 2016 also is likely to see global commodity markets in a bear hug? Commodity markets are going to have a very rough period in 2016 because uh, um, uh, world uh, uh, domestic demand growth is going to be quite weak. Um, and the driver of uh, uh, commodity demand for a couple of years has been China, which had a voracious appetite for uh, commodities uh, during its uh, massive investment surge. Um, that's certainly not going to happen, even if China's growth doesn't slow. As I mentioned, more of the growth is going to be coming from services and from consumption. Uh, Although the Chinese manufacturing sector will still continue growing, the growth in world demand for commodities is going to remain very weak from China. And I don't see many other parts of the world where there is going to be much uh, increase in demand. Uh, increasing demand from the U.S. is going to be offset, of course, by rising supply of certain commodities like oil, uh, including from the U.S., so if one looks at the overall landscape, um, it's hard to see anything that could substantially trigger um, uh, 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 an increase in commodity prices. Okay, Manoj Pradhan, Professor Ishwar Prasad, thank you very much for joining me in this conversation. Well, key takeaways from my guests. One, the Chinese yuan is adjusting or depreciating because it is 
pegging away from the dollar and pegging to a basket of currencies. Two, the uh, fall in the Chinese yuan should not be read as an effort by China to grab global markets. Three, the problem with China is that the PBOC is unable to communicate uh, its uh, intentions and its processes properly. Four, China's economy is slowing, but it is not slowing as much as perhaps uh, the world market fears. Five, uh, Whatever the rate of growth of the Chinese economy, even if it were six and a half, it is unlikely to be positive for the commodity markets because the growth is happening in services and not in manufacturing. Well, that clearly means that uh, the global markets, at least the commodity markets, are going to remain for a goodish bit in a bear hug and that will have its implications of slow growth for the commodity producing countries. Well, those are the main conclusions from this discussion on Indianomics. Thanks for watching.